How long have you been on Instagram? Has it been like two minutes, five minutes, maybe 10, 20? However long it's been, did you realize that that amount of time just elapsed? Did you realize that you were even on social media in the first place, scrolling through these posts? If you're anything like me, you've caught yourself in a state of autopilot, whether it be on Instagram, Facebook, video games, uh, just watching television, eating a bag of chips until some time went by and bam, now you're at the bottom. You've been in a state of autopilot where you don't even recognize you're doing this. And the reason that we engage in this type of behavior in that frame of mind with these specific activities is for two reasons. They're emotionally very, very easy and they're highly stimulating. So before I go on, I want to tell you about why I'm talking about this. In my last video, I talked about being honest and authentic to yourself. And I spoke about passion and purpose a little bit. In this video, I want to elaborate on finding passion and purpose. I want to talk about focus and how those two are connected. And I want to talk about what's getting in your way. And if you can um, sort of tackle the obstacles that are getting in your way, the quality of your life is going to increase drastically, I promise. So let's start with focus. I'm going to pick up where I just left off. The reason that you like to engage in these activities with the complete opposite of focus, that, that zombie state of mind, that autopilot, unconsciousness, is because they're very highly stimulating and emotionally easy. So what happens is we get comfortable with them. There's a hormone and a neurotransmitter called dopamine. And if you've heard this before, you might have heard it um, as the feel-good hormone. And that would actually be a little bit inaccurate. That's serotonin. Dopamine is the anticipation hormone or the desire hormone. It keeps us going. It keeps us anticipating and kind of hooked on something. It's not functional in the part of our brain that makes us like human and separate from other species more involved the prefrontal cortex, it's very prehistoric. It's present in many, many wild animals. And in a lot of ways, we're still very primal in the way that we uh, make our decisions because this is running our decision-making process. So we have to work on this if we want to become truly evolved and more fulfilled in our lives. With these activities, it's no, it's no coincidence that the boom and expansion of technology is inversely related to the average person's attention span. As technology has become more advanced, the average person's attention span has been going way down. Why? Because it's very, very stimulating. It's the same thing with um, foods that are high in salt, sugar, and fat. Those are very, very stimulating to a point where we will ignore the fact that they're not healthy for us in the long term because of the effects they have on our brain chemistry. But fundamentally, it goes back to the reasons that I spoke about. It's very emotionally easy. It doesn't require a lot of effort and it's highly stimulating. And that's where the brain chemistry comes into play. Very, very highly stimulating to a point where it's unnatural, right? Um, to put this into perspective about how powerful this reward system that's wired into our prehistoric brain is, they conducted an experiment on rats, and I'll elaborate on that a little bit just to paint a picture for you. They conducted an experiment where they presented the rat with a lever and correlated the pulling of that lever to a spike in dopamine. And what happened was the rat would pull the lever when presented with food, wouldn't take it. Continuously just pull the lever. When presented with a mate, didn't want to. Continuously just pulling that lever. When presented with water, wouldn't drink it. Wouldn't even take a break to sleep. It is overlooking its basic survival needs because it's being more stimulated. Don't get, like eating food, that's a kick of dopamine too, but it's even higher with um, pulling the lever. So that's what happens with the high amount of stimulation that comes with social media, television, 
internet porn, video games, um, foods that are very unhealthy for you that are high in uh, salt, sugar, and fat. We literally overlook the fact that they're not rewarding to us long term because of the effect that they have our, on our brain chemistry. So it's a little bit of a tricky situation. All these things are available to us. We have to consciously exercise that power of will to not engage in them as regularly because we'll be conditioned to those being more powerful. Um, erectile dysfunction is an increasing issue because of the high amount of stimulation that comes with picking and choosing whenever you want from internet pornography. Um, you know, obesity is a growing uh, at pandemic, especially in North America. Um, you know, they're actually having a problem in a lot of parts of the world where people don't want to engage in normal, normal. They don't want to engage in the regular walks of life because they're saying, fuck that. If I could just stay home, play video games, have a constant flow of food, then what's the point? Well, the thing is, if you do that, and I'm sure some of you have, not as a philosophy for life, but just days at a time, maybe you've, you've played video games all day or you've watched Netflix all day. I'm sure you can resonate with this when I say that that does not feel good. I've been there. You know, I used to smoke weed all day with my friends. Um, we've, I'm sure we've all been there in one way or another, even if it was just one day of our life where it doesn't feel good. It's like, fuck, I gotta like go for a walk. You know, I gotta like engage in something that's not as stimulating I have to reground myself so the reason that this is so drastic for your life is because look at the rat right it didn't have the motivation to eat have sex sleep or drink because of the access that it had with that lever we have the same lever and it's called a cell phone right we have to space ourselves from this a little bit before it becomes like so addicting i promise it's already an addiction so now it's not about taking preventative measures it's about okay what do we do about it so one thing that you can take a look at is um it's a concept called the dopamine detox where you're getting yourself more accustomed to being stimulated by activities that are more natural and more fulfilling more rewarding for your health long term right so let's um compare it to the rat right? The lever is our phone and the food that he didn't want to eat because he had the lever is starting that business that you wanted to start or reading that book that you meant to read. It took more effort for the rat to walk over and eat the food. So he didn't bother. It takes more effort for you to get started on that business or pick up that book and read it. So you don't bother, even though in both situations, it is way more rewarding long term. It's, it's ensuring your survival for the rat. And in a lot of ways, it's ensuring your survival as a human. Well, for me, anyways, that's how I define it. Because I'm, I've been working to attach my definition of survival to passion. If you look at, um, if you look at the work of Abraham Maslow and his idea of self-actualization, it's essentially like in your nature it will evolve to become a need as a human being to be fulfilled through passion and purpose once you've fulfilled more basic survival needs. But we've become so accustomed to having our basic survival needs fulfilled um, that now we've just become complacent and we have all this highly stimulating activity that we engage in that instead. So really, lacking the ability to focus is because you have all this um, all these highly stimulating and low effort activities available to you. So you choose those instead, but it's limiting your results in life. You want to see results and what you want to accomplish. You have to do what's called a dopamine detox. So you get more accustomed to doing more challenging work. That's going to be way more rewarding for you in the long run. Um, there's tons of videos on YouTube about how to perform a dopamine detox. It's, it's pretty straightforward. There's really quick watches. If you want to go take a look at that. So now we covered um, what's stopping you from focusing, why it's important to focus, 
And now let's talk about how that plays a role in finding passion and purpose. So oftentimes when I have conversations with people and they, you know, I'm 19, a lot of people are young that I, that I know and talk to, and they're in the same position a lot of the times where it's like, oh, I don't really know what direction I want to go to. Like, yeah, I'm doing my degree or whatever. Or, yeah, like I'm in this trade, but you know, it doesn't really feel right. Um, it's not like they're calling. And I say, okay, like, what are you passionate about? All right, what do you love more than anything in the world? And that's a good place to start looking at what direction you want to go in your life. But it's not uncommon that the answer is, well, I don't know. And the reason that a lot of people are unsure about what they're passionate about is because they haven't actually taken time to focus in on more than like a, a few things. Maybe they picked up an instrument, they learned how to play an instrument. It's like, yeah, I like it, but I don't love it. Okay, well, maybe that's not your passion. But you got to do this with different things. You can't just do that with a couple and say, okay, you know, that's, a, that's none of these. Keep going, keep, keep searching, right? You have to focus in on things before you can become passionate about them because you have to develop a sense of skill, right? I, um, I'm very passionate about music. It took me a long time to learn how to play the piano. I took lessons for like seven years. There was a lot of hard work involved in that. Had I not done that hard work, I would have not have been passionate. I'm so thankful that my mother made sure my little snobby ass nine-year-old self stayed with it. <laughs> I would fucking cry. I don't want to do this. You know, it's, I didn't like practicing. I'm nine. I don't want to practice. I don't want to do this. And this is a bit of a gray area. There's a lot of ambiguity here because oftentimes, um, parents force their kids to do stuff that they don't want to do past like a healthy point. But you know, my mother made sure I stuck with it. Um, <laughs> she knew I was going to like it. Or maybe she had a hunch or she just said, stick with it a little bit more until you actually get better, right? And then you can see. And she was right. I play now for like at least half an hour a day. Not because it's my job. Not because um, I want to even make a career out of it. But just because I love it. It's great. It's like soul food. You know what I mean? So there's I'm passionate about a lot of stuff. And this is um, one of them. I want to help people, right? So that's the direction that I'm trying to go in. Um, people don't know what they're passionate about and they don't have a sense of how they can serve the world through a purpose because they don't have the ability to focus in on something for longer than five minutes. A lot of people I talk to about meditation and they ask me about my meditation practice and you know they, they hear I do it, they're interested. And they say, oh, I can't sit still for more than five minutes. Yes, you can. Just do it. That's number one. But number two, the reason that it's so difficult for you to do it is because you are so stimulated. There's constant stimulation and it's effortless. Sitting still is also effortless. Stillness is completely effortless. It's the most effortless thing you can do. Yet you avoid it because it's not stimulating. You want to be engaged, right? So that covers focus how to become better at it, how it's gonna serve you, which is you're gonna be able to get more results in what you wanna get. You're gonna be able to read that book that you've been meaning to read. You're gonna be able to cultivate that meditation practice that you've been avoiding every day. You're gonna be able to get started on that book you've been meaning to write, take that course you wanted to take, perform better in school or whatever. It's, I mean, it's not rocket science. You can see where being able to focus is going to help you in all aspects of your life. But it's also going to help you in finding passion and finding purpose. Take care, guys. Have a good day. Thanks for listening.